Good morning, this is Kathy, Crowder's Mountain in North Carolina. Do you see what we're going to make today? I hope you're excited about this. It's a beautiful thistle rose. And this barn quilt could hang on your building or a barn or on your house, wherever you want to hang it. Okay, let's get started. I'll show you what I have. But first, I want to thank you all for joining me today and hope that if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, that you will hit that uh, subscribe button uh, at the bottom of the screen. It's red on the right side. And also, when you do that, there'll be a little bell pop up. Just hit that, and that will give you notifications when I upload new videos. I'll try to do one at least once a month, but sometimes I get busy painting and I have a lot of commission uh, barn quilts and I don't get back to my uh, YouTube channel like I should. But anyway, I do appreciate you joining me today and I apologize, it's been a while since I uh, uploaded a video, but we're gonna get this one done and uploaded today. All right. Let me uh, tell you what I have here, my tools. Now, I use a three-quarter inch piece of plywood, and this particular one is Top Choice Blonde Wood. And y'all know lumber is getting really, really hard to find. So my last trip, I bought Redwood. Now, I'm going to try that. But this piece, particular piece is three-quarter inch, and I've already given it one coat of kills and I do all the sides too so that's the first thing that I do so here's the tools that I have I use this delicate surface scotch tape it's real real thin um, it doesn't leave a ridge when you're painting your blocks and I really like it uh, then you know you, you, you need some scissors and to cut the tape with, but um, I'll show you that pattern in a minute. But I want to show you a trick that one of the ladies in the class showed me. Instead of just reaching for those scissors every time, if you want to cut something, uh, watch this. I'm going to show you something. Now I'm using I'm using a pen right there. Kind of take note of that. Now watch this wrinkled that up at the top but it doesn't matter you can still see what I'm trying to do what's this with this paint scraper you know how you try to get right on the line and it's kind of hard to do watch that look now that cut that right on that line all I had to do was put that paint scraper on it pull it toward me and it cut it now you can get those paint scrapers with beveled edges too, and, and they work um, even better than that. But so far, um, I really used that, and I bought enough for my class uh, participants to use as well. It was such a good trick. But if you don't have one of those, here's another trick that you can use to get your uh, tape right on your line. So that's a line of a triangle or a square that you've got on, on your pattern. Watch this, and I saw this on another video, and I wanted to pass it along to you. Now that lead put, come right up on
Look, look at that. You heat, heat that up and it goes away. So no eraser trash. No scrubbing. It just goes away. Now when it cools down sometime, if I've got it a little bit too thick, it'll pop back up. And I just heat it, hit it again with that um, heat wand and it goes away. But all of your lines, your grid, everything, you could just hit it with that heat and it goes away and it's so much easier. It takes a lot of time to erase all that stuff. And half the time I would already have my tape down before I remembered to erase my lines. And this doesn't matter. You can erase anytime you want to. In fact, it heats the tape up a little bit and I press down on it again and it seems like that seals it even more. But anyway, just look on Amazon. Um, I don't have a particular brand. I just bought the cheapest ones that I could find and they worked. I bought enough to for my class members to use it too. But if you're wondering what that was I was heating with, it's just called a little heat tool. It's an embossing tool, really. I've never done that, but it gets up to like 300 watts, so it doesn't blister your paint as much as a hairdryer would, but you, it will blister it. You, you can't leave it on the paint too long. You just have to kind of keep it moving. Same way you would with a hairdryer, but I like that little thing. It's handy. Okay. Uh... Let me show you, um, I, let me just show you these paint brushes. Uh, I just use all kind of different paint brushes, whatever uh, you like best. I have, I have like one inch wide brushes for bigger blocks and then I have quarter inch, whatever works better for you. Those little round tip brushes seem like they work really well. But you use whatever is comfortable for you to use. I've never tried using a sponge before. Uh, some people may have, but I haven't. I like that little quarter inch brush right there for little, uh, little blocks. And then I have a little flat one that if I make a mistake, it bleeds through, I can go on my line and touch up. And then this little tiny one I got to just go in the corners, like if I didn't get it just exactly right in the corner and I'm, I'm just doing my touch up. Sometime I tell you, I, I use the, I spend at least 30 minutes to an hour touching up some time. But anyway, I wanted to show you this clear two, two foot roller that I got. You know, most of my boards are 24 inches, so I had been looking for a clear 24 inch roller and a girl in my class brought me one. She found it at Hobby Lobby. And she brought it and gave it to me. And I just, that was just so sweet of her. And I just love it. I use it all the time. Now there's my little sanding block that I go around before I put the kills on it. I just go around the board and just sand down the edges with that block and then Put, wipe it off good, you know, because there's dirt and everything else on your boards. And especially after you sand it now, you're going to have some sawdust. So just wipe it down good with a wet rag and then uh, put your kills down. Okay, so let's get started on our pattern. Okay, I promise, I promise, I promise I'm getting to that, that pattern. But I wanted to show you this trick. That's just puppy pads that I put down on my counter down here in the basement to keep it a little bit cleaner. But here's what I use for a Lazy Susan. Instead of attaching something to the back of my quilt, I wrapped a brick in a puppy pad. And it just seems like it works. See, see that slick? And when I put my board down, I can turn it and I turn it the way I need to. It don't move too much on me. It moves when I want it to move. Um, I've got a couple Lazy Susans down here, but I don't know. It just seems like this brick works better for me. I can move it when I don't need it and just lay the quilt flat. 
And here's another trick, and then we're getting to that pattern. But you know how when you paint in a barn quilt, or and you think, well, maybe I want a border, maybe I don't. You just don't know if you want to put that border on there or not. Well, I painted some of the paint stir sticks, the big ones, just so that I could lay it beside of my barn quilt when I got finished or while I'm doing it and and just kind of decide what colors I might want. Uh, so here's, here's just a little one that I did. It's a mailbox barn quilt. And it's just a one by one, but you, you can get the idea of what I'm talking about. So I just painted that. So if I wanted a border, I could kind of get an idea of what red might look like or this yellow. Um, you get the you get the meaning of it. You see what I'm saying, and you can just put all different colors and see what you want. I really didn't want one on this one, but I could have had one. And then, uh, see, so you got different color. I got different colors over here, so I could have had a different color border. But anyway. I just wanted to show you that little trick that I uh, I probably saw that on a video someplace. I'm sure it wasn't an original thought. <laughs> but anyway, um, I put the name on the back of them too uh, so that I wouldn't forget like No More Dramas Red and Whiplash. Anyway, I, I didn't want to forget what color it was. Okay, here she comes. This is the pattern. Now, this is not my original pattern, I have to tell you that. I found a picture of it, and I just drew it out. Uh, like I've said before, if I can count my blocks on a picture, then I can usually draft it out myself. And so, here is the thistle rose. And you can see that it takes 10 blocks for this particular pattern. Now this is a two by two, but if you had a four by four, uh, you could adjust the measurements. You'd still need your 10 blocks horizontally and vertically. And I've heard that called, like if it's a 10 blocks across and 10 blocks up, I've heard that called a 100 block pattern but I usually just say 10 by 10 and let me show you the paints and then we'll get back to the pattern I'm going to use this purple Prince and I'm for my lighter color of uh, purple I'm gonna put some white in it I want the same shade or not yeah, I guess that I want the same color. I just want it to be a little bit lighter uh, for the contrast colors on the, on the pattern. You see what I'm saying? Uh, the dark purple is, and then I'm going to put the white in there for the light purple. But I've been hearing lately that 
some home depots are saying that that's exterior and some of them are saying no they're not they're not meant to last a long time because it's just a sample but anyway i've gone to buy in the courts any uh, i'm not going to buy any more of those samples just to be sure i don't want to I don't want to give a barn quilt away or somebody buy one from me and it not hold up. So I'd rather be safe than sorry. So I'm just going to buy the quartz from now on. But anyway, I just, I just think it's just beautiful colors and I just can't wait to see what it's going to look like on this quilt. So let's get started on that. Okay. Let me explain this pattern. Let me try to explain this pattern. Okay, I am going to have a double border. So I've got 24 blocks, one inch. Rip. Okay, let me start all over. I have 24 blocks. And my board is 24 inches, so every block represents one inch. So on my pattern now, I need 10 blocks. So you can see where I've, I've marked it off every two inches. But I came in two inches on each side, and, and top, bottom, and on the side. So I marked off one inch for the outside border and then one inch for the inside border and then I marked it off every two inches so I had 20 inches left after I took the four away two on each side that left 20 inches and I marked every two inches and it ended up with 10 blocks now I'd repeat that, but I'm sure I would get you even more confused. But once you take the two inches from each side, you've got 20 inches left in the center. And you need 10 blocks across and up. So I am going to take time and draw that off. And then I'm going to draw the pattern. And I'll fast forward in different places so that this video is not four hours long. Even though it takes me all day to paint because I stop and start. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Okay. Now I'm going to use my, my heat erasable pens again. And one good thing about that is that I'm going to draw the pattern with one color. And then I'm going to draw my grid with another color. And when I'm drawing my pattern, you see, I'll be able to see it better. And won't have to worry about what, if I'm really taping up the right uh, blocks or not. But anyway, you'll see what I'm talking about uh, the farther we get into it. Okay, so... I'm going to take my 24 inch ruler and I'm going to make sure that my board is 24 inches. You know, sometimes that saw eats up uh, part of your wood and you could have an eighth of an inch off or even a quarter inch off. But just make sure when you are putting your ruler on your board that you allow for any discrepancy in that 24 inch. Um, exact measurement and, and say like you have a fourth of an inch off then make sure you have an eighth of an inch left on each side and once you do that do it all the way around you're going to be fine so I'm marking here I'm marking every two inches because I want ten inches in the middle 10 blocks in the middle. I'm sorry. All right. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and mark those one inch from the inside. I'm going to mark that one inch here 
So I already have that done. So that's that outside border. And once I mark that off every two inches, see I've got that inside border already marked too. So I'm I'm taking that and marking it at the bottom, and then I'm gonna mark it at the top. Same exact way. You gotta make sure your ruler's straight up here. Cause you don't want your blocks to be all wobbly. So I'm going to mark that, and then I'm going to mark it down the sides, and I'll, I'll come back and show you how I just, all I'm going to do is connect the lines. So now all I have to do is connect my lines and I usually just go all the way across. You see I'm drawing my grid on here now. By connecting these lines, I'm going to have those 10 squares that I need to draw my pattern on. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're just going to take this one block at a time. See, you see just one block, if you take one block at a time, pretty soon you'll have the whole pattern drawn on here. So don't get overwhelmed with it, just let's do one block at a time. Now, you'll see the, the flower itself here. You're going to go across a block, so we're going to look at that block, but we're actually going to draw it from, there's the third block, and we're going to draw it from the bottom block to the top block. See that? You'll go from the left bottom to the top right on the second row. I want you to really pay attention to that. Usually I just do one block at a time on these videos, even though sometimes I go all the way across the board if I'm uh, doing it myself. And, and if you've done them before, you probably do that too. But this, if you'll just look at one block at a time, 
we'll get it drawn on here. So let me let me start drawing and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so we've already got our borders already drawn. So we're going to go one, two, and on the third block, we're going to draw from the bottom of that block up to the top of the block above it to the right. You see that? I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page with me. And then we're going to, we got two blocks there that we're going across. Okay, here we go. There's the first line. And now we skip a block, skip that block. And then we're going to the next block, and you see how that's from the bottom left to the top right. And then from the top right, I'm top left to the bottom right. So we're just going to make a B here. Again, we're just on that first row. Okay, now we're skipping a block, and we're going to do the same thing that we did on that first one. We're going from the top on that second second row at the top of that block and to the bottom right. You see that? And so we've got it. We've got that drawn, and see that block's going to be colored in. You don't have to do anything to that one. So we're going to our second row. As I told y'all, I was going to use a different color pen, and I almost forgot to. All right, so that's that block. The second second one's going to be colored in. You don't have to do anything to it. And there's that block. So we're just going to keep going row by row till we get them all drawn. Now I'm going to fast forward this part since I think you got it now. See what I'm doing here? I'm up to that second little petal on that flower, and I'm going from the I went from the bottom right to the top left on that second row. Up oh, on the third row, actually. So I'm gonna let the video run so that you can see what I'm doing. You see, I'm just counting the blocks. Okay. I'm not going to fast forward this, but you can, if you get the gist of it and you're ready to move on, I'll let you fast forward it.
cow. I just wanted to hold this up. I promised I'd hold it up so you could take a screenshot of it. Let me see if I can get that to where you can take it. And you can just take a screenshot of it if you want a copy of that pattern. Okay, here we go. Let's finish up. just as close to my line as I can. Let's see if I can get that right. And this is another place that this little uh, paint scraper comes in handy. Now I could have cut that with my scissors, but it's just so much easier to do that way. I don't have to like, I don't have to like load my scissors in my hand and whack. I can just pick it up and whoop, swap it and it's done. here see I don't have to worry about going into that block because I'm not going to paint that block anyway I'm trying to get that just right on the corner as close as I can get it all right so I've got this part done I've got this part all taped up now let's see if I can use this with this part. Get back up there again. You have to kind of leave a little bit to give yourself something to hold on to. See that? And then I can take this part, it's not going to be wasted, and put it here. Oh, <laughs> I tore it backward. Put it here. All right, see that? Now I've got, I've got that part. all taped up so I'm gonna have my darkest green on the right side so this is just the easiest way now typically what I would do if I wasn't trying to show you guys what I'm doing I would tape up all four of these sections because they're not touching each other they're not overlapping so I wouldn't have to worry about any kind of fancy cutting or using this or whatever I could just go all the way around taping that up and paint every one of these dark greens at the same time. And that's the way I'll do when I'm not videoing. But for right now, I want to show y'all this. Alright, do you see these lines? This is what I was talking about a while ago. It's so much easier than trying to erase with that eraser and getting eraser trash on your board and making sure you get it and making sure it don't get into your paint. So here we go. We're going to get rid of those lines.
just now I realized that I didn't get that just exactly on my corner, did I? See, that's important too. You want crisp lines. And when I put that tape down, see it wasn't right into that corner. All right, so now I go back along and mash that down again, press it down real hard. Uh, there's another word for that, but I don't remember what it is right now. So I'm just pressing it down real hard all the way around. There you go. Now we're going to do our dark green. And, and it's important not to push your paint underneath that tape. Even though we've pressed it down and everything else, we still want to go paint away from it. Now you can go down like this, or you can do this, either whatever's comfortable for you. But don't go into the tape. All right. And you need a real thin thin layer, especially if you're using semi-gloss. Like this is flat, but it will still peel up on you if you get it too thick. So if you put thin layers, you can put as many coats as you want to make sure that it gets to the shade and color that you want without feeling like it's going to get really thick and pull up on you. Okay. So we've got that, we've got that one coat down. I'm going to dry it real good. And I don't know if you see this or not. But as it dries, you know, it goes from that shiny to a flat. And you can tell that you've got it dry that way. And once you get that first coat on, you can just keep, you can come down like this. Time. Gotta... Sorry, I think it's a paint bristle. All right, I fix it. I'm not leaving it in there. I'll just have to hit that spot a couple more times. Yeah, I say paint bristle. <laughs> paint brush. Okay. That was the third coat, but I'm going to put a fourth coat on there. I'm going to use this brush so much I am going to get me some little baggies and just stick it in there instead of putting it in water and rinsing it out every time
See, that'll help it, help it stay moist until I get to the other side. You know, if I was doing all the green at one time, I wouldn't have to do that, but we're going to take it one color at a time for now. All right, now I'm going to let that cool, and as soon as that's cooled to the touch, then we can just lift that off, and hopefully we've got a pretty line. And I peel away, different people say different, different things, but I peel away from my paint. And I let it get good and dry first. All right, and now this is a this is something I, another thing that I never had the nerve to do it until one of my students was doing it, and and she said I've never made a barn quilt before. I didn't know you couldn't do it, and I <laughs> said, well, it's working out for you, and I'm going to try it too. So what I do now is flip it over, and see that's dry. I can go ahead and put this down over top of it. And I flip it over and use the other side. This tape is like, it's over $5 a roll. It's close to 6 Unless you buy it by the case, which um, I think I might start doing. And see, even if I have a little bit of that green sticking out, that's good. I'd rather have paint over that just a little bit, and I know I don't have a white line going through there. So hopefully this will work out. Let me double check that one. Yep. Okay. All right. Get rid of these lines. green color I think I'm gonna put a fourth one on it.
that better. I may even go back and put another coat on that one. I, I'm not so sure I like that. Uh, the shade that it's turning out to be. With, I think I actually put four coats on here. So we'll see when we get this tape pulled up. for a minute and while I'm doing that I am going to block off this you see that point right here I'm gonna block that off and maybe this one that way I don't have to do that fancy cut work okay at this point I'm going to speed the video up so this video will not take four hours but you can tell what I'm doing <music> tape again. This is the side that I used the first time and so now I'm going to use the inside of the tape or the other side of the tape and I'm not wasting it. So I've got six so far of these triangles here taped up and I have plenty of tape left that I've already used one time. So you see what I was talking about? You get a lot more mileage out of your tape if you flip it around and use the other side. And as long as you press down good, it's going to work. Now, I've never tried using it twice if on the side that I've already painted on because I don't trust that. Um, I don't want to go around uh, fixing a whole lot of mistakes that I don't have to. So I've never tried that. If, so if you guys tried it, let me know if it works. But anyway... Just wanted to show you how I had it taped up with my um, with my tape that I've already used one time on this other side. So I'll be back. Okay, you can see I'm getting part of it done. I wanted to go back and 
talk a little bit more about this tape because I just got to thinking a while ago when I was explaining it to you that I used the other side. Well, it's always worked for me. I don't know if anybody else does that or not. I've never seen anybody doing it on the videos, but that doesn't mean that they don't do it. But, but you see, when I pull it off here, I've got that side that doesn't have any tape on it. So why would that not make sense that I could use the other side? It still sticks. It still, you know, it adheres to the board really well. And if the paint and getting that wet is what activates that sealant, then there's no sealant on this side of the tape. I mean, the sealant's not activated on that side of the tape. So why couldn't I use it over here, right? So that's what I've been doing. Uh, I've done that for a couple of months now, and it's worked. But I thought, well, I'm going to do it here with you guys watching. And I'm not going to cut this out if it don't work, but it's always worked for me. Let's see what happens. So theoretically, I've activated the sealant on that tape by getting it wet. Okay, now that's dry. We're gonna let it cool down a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm pulling this off while I let it cool. Tape don't fail me now. There's one. See? That works. And you get twice as much mileage out of that tape. And I can go back and, I don't know, that wasn't a tape. That was my fault not getting it down. But you see that? Okay. That's tape hack number 12. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm going to finish and I'll be back. Okay. I'm almost finished. Got three sides done. Three of the three fourths. I've got three fourths of it done. But I wanted to just give you guys something to laugh at before I finish. You know, and my motto is you, you can't mess it up. You can always repaint, right? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to have to do. Watch when I pull. This is supposed to be the triangle like that, right? Well, I painted the wrong side. 
Let me see it. Can you, <laughs> this triangle is supposed to be white. I painted it, and I kept thinking, what in the world is wrong? Because I was supposed to have painted this side. So I'll have to put a little bit of kills on that, probably. Sometime you can cover it up with your the, the paint that's supposed to be there. Uh, but for right now, I just think that what I'm going to do is tape it off, put a little bit of kills on it so that when I put my lighter color on it, I'm not ha not uh, not going to have to worry about it bleeding through. I thought I'd give you a little something to laugh at me about. <laughs> I'll be right back. All I have to do is fix that and these three blocks, and we'll have our uh, pattern painted. Okay, I've covered up my mistake with the kills, and I think I'm back to where I need to be to start on uh, the background. And so what I think that I've decided to do, I'm going to put a dark gray on the border, on the outside border here, and then a lighter gray for the inside border, and then a white with just a tint of gray for the background around our design. Let me get those paints out, and then I will show you what they're going to look like, and then we'll start painting. I'm going to take this off first. There you go. We're kind of back to where we were. Alright, I'll be back in a minute. Let me get the paint. So I just want to show you how easy it is. Um, I know you've watched me a couple of times. But look how easy it is to get rid of all these lines. Now I'm going to paint the background. See how easy that was to get rid of all those grid lines? Okay. Have I told you how excited I am about the magic pens? Heat erasable pens. Okay, got my border colors ready. Now this dark gray, I started out with elephant gray. It's a dark gray and that actually is semi-gloss. And I put a little white in it for my in, inner border. See, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paint the outside border that dark gray. And then I'm going to paint the inner border with a medium gray. But my background, I put even more white in it and got just a tint, a little tint of gray in it. So it looks more white than it does gray. But I didn't, I wanted to make sure that my grays all were the same exact color, just different shades. So that's why I mixed the paint. Okay, what do you think about it? I think I like it. The center of the thistle rose and the the outside background 
is that very, very light gray. So I, I think it makes the actual pattern kind of pop. It makes it stand out. So I like that. Okay, now I have the inside border done. And that's the little bit darker. I, I'm calling that the medium gray. And now I'm going to put on that elephant gray, which is the darker gray. Okay. I'm getting ready to take that green tape off. We're going to be able to see what it looks like. Hang on. Here she is. I think I like that gray. What do y'all think? I see a little boo-boo down there in the left-hand corner. Gotta touch that up. What do you think? I think I like that gray. Now the green tape that you saw me have on there, that was some old tape that I ordered online that's not very good. So I never use it on my quilt itself. But since that uh, scotch tape is so expensive, I didn't have another end to flip around like I did on that light, the medium gray, I mean. So I used that green tape on the outside border and and it did okay, but you can see down there in that left-hand corner where it left me hanging, but I can fix that. It won't take but a second. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have a pattern that you'd like for me to try, just let me know in the comment section, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you again for watching. I hope you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for notification. See you in the next one. Bye now.